The Ottoman Empire ruled over Iraq until World War I, but during the war the British fought the Mesopotamian Campaign and successfully captured Baghdad. While to the west in the Levant, the Allies fought alongside the Arabs who rose up under the Sharif of Mecca. The Arabs had been promised independence, but the French and British had also signed the Sykes-Picot Agreement, dividing the Ottoman Empire between themselves. So to try and align all conflicting promises made during the war, the Sharifian solution was implemented once the war was concluded. This made the children of the Sharif of Mecca kings of new states in the Middle East, Syria which would go under French influence, and Transjordan and Iraq which were under British. However, the new king of Syria, Faisal, was quickly removed from power during the Franco-Syrian War, so the British offered him the crown of Iraq. But as a Sunni Arab ruler, he ruled over a diverse kingdom which included many Assyrians, Kurds and Shiite Muslims, and in 1920 there were widespread rebellions. However, the British were able to help him restore order and signed the Anglo-Iraqi Treaty of 1922, giving the Iraqis control over local government. The country also became far richer after the discovery of oil fields in 1927, however these would remain under British control. Plus, the new political bodies remained weak in such a diverse country, and as the British put a lot of money into the army, the military began to increase in power. This made the Sunni generals the most influential people in Iraq when Britain granted them independence in 1930. But Iraq promised to aid Britain in time of war, granted them military access and use of their air bases. However, after the British left Iraq, the government massacred Assyrians in the north in 1933, and during the same year, Ghazi became king and his Prime Minister, Al-Hashimi, began to implement conscription, and this led to further uprisings in the mid-1930s amongst the Shia and Yazidi. Al-Hashimi often ruled by decree, and tasked General Sitki, a Kurd himself, to crush the rebellions. But Sitki launched a coup in 1936, when Al-Hashimi did not promote him further, and he installed a new Prime Minister, Suleiman. Suleiman, however, was also not an Arab, and he signed a non-aggression pact, the Sabadak Pact, with his non-Arab neighbours, Turkey and Iran. But many Arab nationalists believed that this was surrendering claimed land in Iran, and he began restructuring the army, killed political opponents, and then, in 1937, Sidki was assassinated. However, the assassin and his motives are still debatable. With Sidki gone, Suleiman was forced to resign, and al-Midfai became Prime Minister, having been Prime Minister twice already but he again ruled as a military dictator, and his chief opposition came from Nouri al-Said, another former prime minister who had fled to Britain. And Nouri was able to persuade his allied officers to launch a coup in December 1938, and he took over once again. But while all this was going on, the German ambassador Grober had helped send Iraqi officers to Germany for training, and spoke against the British in Iraq. Some officers therefore began to turn towards Germany for aid, and the four highest ranking officers formed the Golden Square, which included al Sabag, a colonel who had helped Nuri return to power. And the following year, King Ghazi died in a car crash, and many held Nuri as responsible. Ghazi's successor, Faisal II, was just a child, so a regent was appointed, Abdullah, and he largely followed Nuri's pro British policies. Meanwhile, over in Palestine, Arab nationalists unsuccessfully had rose up against the British and their leaders, including the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, fled to Iraq in 1939, meeting with Iraqi Arab nationalists there. And a month later, World War II began, but Nouri did not honour the agreement to join the war, and only deported German officials. And by 1940, France fell and the Vichy government took over neighbouring Syria. Plus, as Nouri had lost the support of al Sabag, he couldn't properly govern without military backing. So Al-Gayani was brought back into power, having been Prime Minister before in 1933, and he refused to break off ties with the Italians when they entered the war, and Iraqi diplomats were even sent to meet with the Germans. So the British responded by placing sanctions on Iraq, and British victories in Egypt reinforced their power in the Middle East. So Regent Abdul Ilah pressured Gaylani to step down in early 1941, but the Golden Square began to make plans to reinstall him into power and assassinate the regent. Abdullah discovered these plans in March and fled, and the next day, on April the 1st, the military in Baghdad moved to take power. They met no real resistance and Gaylani was reinstalled as Prime Minister, but the British began to send troops to Iraq and the Anglo-Iraqi war broke out a month later. 